here. My name is Brent Otto, and I'm a Jesuit priest and spiritual director, and a former member of the staff of Ignatius House in Atlanta. The image of God's holy mountain painted for us by the prophet Isaiah presents the natural order looking very unfamiliar. Lions eat straw, infants play with snakes, and leopards and goats sleep side by side. It's a picture of an unworldly harmony. Old identities of predator and prey drop away on God's holy mountain. Enemies become friends and eat together, animals and humans alike. It's a world transformed, transformed by a child who leads them, Jesus Christ, who fills the whole earth with the knowledge of the Lord. Would that we be transformed by our gentle Jesus. Now, when I studied theology, I lived in a Jesuit residence called Shalom House, which is a Hebrew word that is often translated in English as peace. In fact, the house had earlier been a residence for Jewish university students, so keeping the name Shalom reflected our respect for the house's prior residence and their faith, as well as our own common commitment to Shalom. Now, Shalom means a lot more than just peace. It's the biblical concept of a godly ordering of all the relationships in the world. It names a justice, a peace, and a harmony that accords with God's deepest hope, God's plan. How Isaiah describes God's holy mountain is precisely an image of shalom. That sort of harmony, a fully reconciled world banished of all violence and all adversarial relationships, might seem so far out of reach. At the very least, it's not something we can attain on our own. It's a lot more than just a personal nirvana. It's a communal, even a universal state of affairs that we have to lean towards and work for together. For we really do yearn for it, don't we? In the deepest parts of our heart. But try as we might, it's not just going to be about our efforts and ideas. As, I, as Isaiah says, a little child will lead them. That is Jesus, in whom we learn the knowledge of God. Jesus is the one to lead us, ultimately through cross and grave to resurrection, the path of love. So are we letting ourselves be led? Do we lean in the direction of Jesus's peaceable kingdom by our words, by our deeds, in our social life and community, in our political life as citizens, in our spiritual life as disciples? Do we let our hearts truly merge with God's heart in desiring the shalom that Isaiah describes on the holy mountain? Do we make a home, our home, amidst those values? Well, we surely can't do it on our own. We have got to join hands and hearts with family, with friends, with neighbors today, and together look to the child who will lead us.